Hello, hello friends, Dapper Drabby here. Welcome to another video. I know it's been a minute or a few, uh, a month or so since I've been able to post last time, uh, but I'm able to uh, post today. Sorry, wrong way. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a tournament review. We're going to check out the swag that we got from the tournament and one of the pulls I got from the tournament. And then we're also going to go into this bag because I was supposed to get this before the tournament, but it didn't come in until the tournament was going, so I wasn't able to open it beforehand. But we'll go ahead and check out everything today, and uh, we'll get started in uh, one second. So I hope the music there wasn't clashing too much, but, uh, and then my phone ringing. Uh, of course, the moment I hit record, my phone starts ringing. But I want to go over the swag a little bit. Uh, first thing I wanted to show, since we can put it on the bottom, is the play mat. As you can see, it says uh, regional champion, uh, championship regional here. Uh, we went up to Toronto, and we played a deck, and we tied a lot of games. That's what happened. So as you can see, this is an Eevee Snorlax deck. Made me sad I didn't play Eevee Snorlax. But you guys will see what I played in a moment. And I might make this a mainstay for Pack-A-Days on Twitter. So if you guys do want to go check out Pack-A-Days and you have a Twitter, feel free to follow me at Dapper Drabby. That's what the Twitter handle is. Um, I don't know if we'll do any openings on uh, Twitch or anything, but we do do Twitch as well. So first thing they gave us was a box says regionals this one I think specifically has the uh the champion there and then they are actually using this for multiple regionals as you guys can see memphis greensboro hartford madison and toronto so there'll be plenty more chances to get this box if you go into one of those um i already started i already threw a few cards in there they also gave us a uh a promo but i'll show you guys that when we get to that point um i will go ahead and show you the deck i played record was not great um, I played a bit of a toolbox deck and I just think I just got distracted a lot and I was not able to play very well uh, but it happens um, I was I will say I won a game every series I also lost a game every series uh, so a lot of ties my total record was one three five and uh, if you guys are interested in the matchups I could tell you them a little bit uh, but it not terribly interesting. I think I faced two Archies in the day um, and two Zoroks in the day. That's the only repeats. The rest of them are all different decks. But I will go ahead and show you guys what I did. I'm probably the only one who played this guy and that is two Eevees to go along with my two Jolteons which I adore. This is uh, this is kind of the original deck idea and then we changed it and then we changed it and then I kind of settled back onto Jolteon because I was like, you know what? Jolteon's proved itself to me when I was testing. I tested against a Pikaram. It was able to two-shot a Pikaram and take no damage because of Swift Run. So I was like, you know what? That's good enough to me for me to play Jolteon. So I ended up playing Jolteon. Of course, we have to throw Zero Aura in there for free retreat. Not that you need it on the Jolteon, but there's other things that need the free retreat with the Lightning Energy. A hey, Tapu Koko Prism lets you get two energies out of the discard and put them onto two of your Pokemon with that Ancient Dance. Of course, we play Tapu Koko GX. That's a good counter straight up to Pikaram. There was a lot of Pikaram there. I actually never faced any, though. Um, as well as a few other things like Waylord. Uh, if it has a lot of energy on it, you can actually one-shot it with Tapu Koko GX, which is pretty cool. And then here's the Spice. The Spice. I'll go with this one first. Is a Pikaram. Single one. I play what I pull. I play what I pull. I pulled one Pikaram, so I played one Pikaram. Later on in my pack of days, I was able to pull something else, but it was too late to play it. And I'll show you guys that later because it is pretty slick artwork. But uh was too late to the party. Um, and then my special tech to it was that my idea was to full blitz onto a Rayquaza. That's right, Rayquaza here um, has that stormy wind. So you can take energy out of the discard part or put on my own, which is what I use for the grass. If any time I discarded a grass, I would stormy winds and put it back up onto them. And then full blitz if I could onto Rayquaza to be able to hit 
you know, 120 damage based off of just an attachment and a full blitz. So that was the basic idea I tried to pull off with these two. And then this was kind of like a backup attacker slash like early pressure. And so that's what I utilized it for. And uh, overall, none of it worked. Uh, but and then we have our support mons. We have a Tapu Lele for draw to search for any of our cards mostly a guzma or a sycamore shaman for draw support and then marshadow for some a little bit of a uh, disruption when we get off the full blitz we could disrupt our opponent so that they can't fly swing back very hard and that was kind of the plan behind that and then uh for supporters looks like i'll start here we play two supporter two sycamores for general draw support and n a Colrus, a Lily for all of our draw support, one Lysander, and then here is the other card they gave us. Here's the original championship card they gave us. This beautiful artwork on Guzma. Uh, pretty slick. It's a reverse hollow, and it is a uh, really cool artwork. So I played one Guzma, one Lysander, and that was our supporter count for uh, stadiums. We ended up playing one Silent Lab to prevent the effects of Marshadow Shaman and Lele, as well as uh, if we, it was just a kind of a disruptive thing against our opponent to try to get them before they set up. Sometimes it hindered us more than them. Um, there was a lot of rays, so that helped uh, stop rays, but not a lot. We had one Viridian Forest. This allowed me to dis uh, discard my lightning energy for Tapu Koko. As well as uh, just when I needed a grass energy for Rayquaza, I was able to discard to get the grass energy exactly. And then of course we play Thunder Mountain because look at all this lightning deck we're playing. Literally Jolteon with one energy can swift run with a uh, one energy and a Thunder Mountain. So there's no reason not to play Thunder Mountain when swift run is such a great uh, GX attack. Now for items, we have General Ball support in nest ball which i pulled a lot of all the time and then three ultra ball as well for search options which i seem to have trouble finding we have battle compressor uh to throw our supporters down into the discard pile to throw our energy down in the discard pile and then we get those things out with via seeker we got three of those oh that's just focusing anytime we lose something that we can utilize uh Unfortunately, the only thing we always lost a lot was either Zero Aura or Topper Coco Prism. Topper Coco Prism you cannot get back, but the Zero Aura we would sometimes rescue stretcher for. So we have a rescue stretcher, and then we have the Turbo aspect of the of the deck, which is three Max Elixirs, which uh, I barely got off. Um, they always worked. They always worked, but I never pulled them in the right order. We have the Oops, I attached to the wrong guy card in a couple of energy switches which also works with Tapu Koko when you put two energies onto the board so you put it on Zero Aura and Pikachu Zekrom you can move the one off of Zero Aura with two Pikachu Zekrom or most of the time what ended up happening was Max Elixir would hit a grass energy on a lightning Pokemon so I would have to energy switch that to a Rayquaza who could utilize it. We have Max Potion which is a fun tech uh, if our uh, Jolteon got heavily damaged, we were able to max potion it off. Uh, game that really happened in was uh, Hitmonchan. We faced off against a Hitmonchan, it would do 180 damage to Jolteon. So I would just max potion it up uh, to bring it back to life and keep uh, Electro Bulleting for uh, spread damage there. And then we have our damage modifiers. We're playing four of the big boy Electro Power since we have so much lightning. We have one muscle band, which this helped out with a lot of math. My thinking with it specifically was head bolt with a muscle band hits 130, which will knock out buzz holes, uh, buzz swalls. Sorry, uh, buzz hole, buzz hole. Um, it was my thinking, and then also it electro bullet allows it to hit for 50. And um, I believe there was some like Zubats out there that had 50 HP, 
There's a couple things that had 50 HP that Muscle Band helped with. But unfortunately, to knock out Shamans with Electro Bullet, you'd still need an Electro Power. So one Electro Power with Jolteon knocks out a Shaman, which was kind of nice. And then one Choice Band, because we did face off against a lot of EXs. Choice Band was mainly for Picarom, so that 150 can be 180 and knock out Rayquazas. Can knock out um, Aleles, all those all those uh basic big basics that are that and then we played uh three grass energy for our rayquaza so i'll just put them down here one two three four five six seven eight nine lightning energy because it's mainly a lightning deck with a rayquaza tech uh so nine lightning energy and then well uh, lightning is weak against fighting so we needed a couple of flash energy which take away the weakness so that we could actually face off against buzz holes i actually felt my best matches were against buzz hole and hitmonchan i don't know why but i think maybe i just focused more on those matches um so hopefully you guys can see all this i see that the top is looking like it's fading away a little bit but uh yeah that is the deck i ended up playing you guys can go ahead um copy it down if you want I could probably leave a, a list of it actually in the description box if you guys are interested. Um, but uh, it's a bit of a box deck. It didn't work out phenomenally, but I believe it had a lot of good matchups. I know against Night March, which I never faced, uh, the Jolteon's really good because you can uh, you can knock out two Joltix at once. Granted, then they just swing big with your Marsh Shadow, but if you do end up getting a flash energy on prior it's still difficult to knock out jolteon you can also switch run to take out that mars shadow so that they have to utilize their rescue stretchers and that stuff to get it back um so unfortunately i never got that matchup though uh but my matches went i went against a turbo ray first turbo ray in ho -Oh ex um ho -Oh ex is a coin flipper that gets you two energies out of the discard pile onto a uh onto a ho-oh ho -Oh G -E -X. um so that was interesting um i think i was able to win that game luckily because the guy i was able to win one game of that because the guy threw down a shaman and i was able to snipe that um off with the guzma uh it was a very very close series but first game was ray turbo ray i think he won first game i won second game we didn't finish third game second game was waylord Waylord uh, won first game. I won second game. Third game, I don't know exactly what happened. I think I knocked out. He knocked out. Oh, he cleared my board. That's what happened. That's what happened with that one was he cleared my board. Um, uh, he knocked out two Jolteons, and I dead drew. Uh, he, uh, I, sh I think I did knock out his EV Snorlax, but uh, unfortunately, I think we did the math wrong. And he was able to just take it out. But I think he still had it regardless. He would have been able to superior energy retrieval. Get all those energies back. Throw it on the Waylord who was already on the bench. And just swing in the Jolteon and take it out anyways. So it wasn't... I wasn't too worried about it. He definitely took two wins over me. Um, third one was an interesting one. And I am scarred for life from it. Uh, the guy played Zorark Bats. But... After I won the first game, oh wait, no, I think he won the first game, I took the second game, and then third game, I was trying to go big or go home, and go home was probably it, um, because I ended up having a Thunder Mountain out, and I uh, full blitzed onto Pikaram, and then uh, that Pikaram was immediately follow-up knocked out by a gumshoes gx gumshoes gx yeah after that i had no energy on the board and uh just lost just lost after that it was just no energy on the board lo lose so uh, unfortunately i was not able to win that one but uh that is the way it happens sometimes when you don't uh, expect things like uh, gum on your shoes that was a trump card i was not expecting to see and it came and hit me hard uh so that is unfortunate but that is the way it happens uh the following round i got the buzz hole uh the tie works you know um that one i was a bitter about though it was right before lunch um he had four energy on the board i came in with tapu coco 
GX. Uh, with the, I only I only had one prize left. He had two prizes left. I uh, came out with Tapu Koko GX, Electro Powered, and then Tapu Thundered onto a Lucario GX. But I am blind. The Lucario GX had a Focus Ash. So that Lucario then GX me and I was done for. No more funzo. So it was a tie because of that. And because uh, there was time after that. It was called time around the second game. Uh, it took so long to win the first game that it was, time was called in the second game and he won last second. I was like, oh my god, tie. Uh, so you take those. Uh, the fifth round, we came back from lunch and uh, what was it? I think that's when I faced another Zorark. But this guy was a Zorark. He was a um, Garbodor. Zorak, Garbodor, Lycanroc, and Seismitoad. I don't know how he fit all that into a deck, but he fit all that into a deck. And uh, it's a lot, a lot of techs. Um, I was able to tag bolt Lycanrocs, but uh, third game came by. I think I won one, he won one with. Uh, and then I was a, the last game, he was able. I had one prize left, and he. Uh, had three Pokemon on the bench. He Guzmud up, or he Lysandered up a Shaman and swung on it with Zorark doing exactly 110 damage and taking out the Shaman for game three and took that one from me. So that's my three losses. My, my record was one, three, five. That was my three losses, almost right away actually. And the rest of the games went exactly how I just told you, which is high size, high size, high Um After that round, I got paired up against somebody that did a no-show. So there's my one win. You take them. You take them in a long day. You take a day off, considering all my rounds were going to time. Every single round was going to time, which kind of sucked. Um, so you take those. And then, uh, I know, it was flip-flop. That, that was my sixth round. My... Fifth round. Fifth round was Waylord again. Fifth round was Waylord again. Um, first game, she set up, blew me up. Second game, I set up, blew her up. Third game, I got a bloody nose. We got a 10 minute extension. <laughs> and then uh, neither party could take the game in the three turns um, after we timed out. So that is what it is. We weren't able to. Uh, I got a bloody nose second game, actually. Second game, I got I set up, got a bloody nose. It, it was too strong. The setup was too strong, and I got a bloody nose from it, um, which happens, I guess. Uh, so I got time extension. Uh, of course, because of the time extension, we still went to time after that. And uh, so we each had one game. We were going to see if she could donk me because I started Marsh Shadow. And uh, she could have donked the Marsh Shadow, but I was able to pull off a, a, a bench setter. And that bench sitter uh, saved me from getting donked, which made it a tie game. Uh, so you take those when it's against a Waylord that's stronger than you. Stronger than you. Um, oh, I thought I ordered this in white. Oh, well. And, um, and then I got the free win after that. And then following that, it was a Hitmonchan deck, which... Uh, I quickly knocked out ter uh, game one. Second game, he found his Hoopa, and I didn't have an answer for Hoopa. Uh, I could not find my Silent Lab to be able to knock it out with Tapu Koko GX. I figured that was the best match because best attacker for me because it had no weakness, and Jolteon was the second best attacker because I could throw a Flash Energy on it and it would have no weakness, and it has the most HP out of everything besides Pikaram. Um, so that was my thinking. I tried to pull it off. Um, and it just didn't work out in my favor. And then third game, just not enough time to finish it. So a tie game. You take those against Hitmonchan. You take ties. And then last game was against a Trevenant, which I took first game uh, in kind of a slugfest. He, I think he magical swapped with his Tapu Lele too soon, so he was not able to take out my Jolteon. And took out my Zeroar, which I actually thought the Zeroar was a better one to take out because it could hit 160 on the dot. You know, and then I just retreat it, Guzma back up, and 
160 on the dot against Trevenant. Uh, that item lock really hurts, but uh, I had a way around it. I thought Jolteon Zero Hour was really the way around it, and Rayquaza can hit that number two. So it was kind of just switching between those three, and I won the first game, I think by one or two prizes. And then uh, second game, we went to time, um, and he won on turn two, or turn, his last turn, I think. He went, he was zero, I was one, he was two. So he won on his second turn there uh, with a Tapu Lele DCE against uh, Pikaram. Um, and that was, uh, I felt bad about that tie just simply because he kind of rushed me. And I guess I'm not used to tournament play where someone's going to rush you on the other side just so they can try to tie the game. Um, but yeah, he rushed me and was able to get it on his last chance. So yeah, I give him props for that. But uh, I didn't like facing him. I can tell you that factually. So opening this package. We have something fun, and it didn't, they didn't give me the right color. I'm pretty sure I asked for white, and they gave me black. But I'll show it to you guys nonetheless, and then we will, we'll see that other thing there. So, the thing that this is, is a sweater. It's a sweater, nice and big sweater, and do you guys see what this says on it? That's beautiful, right? It's so beautiful. It's a big on hype sweater. And I have my name here. So that's pretty nice too. Uh, I love it. This is great. I really wish it was in white though. But this looks pretty slick, I'm going to say. So expect me to wear this for streams and whatnot. Um, I think it's going to look great as I muffle my voice here. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. But that is not all that's in this. We got one more hype thing. Um, two more hype things to show you. And that is this guy. What is it, you may ask? It is something wonderful. It is artwork from one of our subscribers on YouTube and one of our uh, great followers on Twitch. He made me this wonderful little guy this wonderful little rock rough I put lurk underneath of it and this is a drawstring bag and it actually has him on both sides so you can wear it either side so I'm thinking wear this at a tournament so that you can you know have your have your play mat have your deck have everything inside of it and uh, just have this beautiful little lurk I love this. It looks amazing. I like this a lot. And it's a canvas bag, so it's pretty strong. Has this awesome image on it. And I don't know how long this video's lasted, but I'm sure it's extremely long by now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the last thing. My last pack of day made, gave me a wonderful pull. And I will show you guys that, because I don't know if you guys are on Twitter, but go check out Twitter because I was able to pull this in my last pack of my booster box. And it's a full art Pika you Zekrom and it looks amazing so now I don't have to buy a, uh, a tin or anything because I got to and I can actually start playing Pika Rom how it's supposed to be instead of with a bunch of different random things so I will probably cut off there let's go ahead and fade over to here I want to thank everybody so much for stopping by uh, there's a bunch of if you guys uh, heard the songs a lot of them are written right there if you guys are interested in researching them um, but it's pencil pencil rocks that I use so for music in the background and it's pretty nice um, I want to thank everybody so much for stopping by today we'll have a video that way and uh, hopefully I'll be getting some uh, thing that corners up soon I'll put another video down here and I'll put a um, I'm going to find my channel over over there somewhere in the corner, probably. I don't know how to point with the camera facing me. But uh, I want to thank everybody so much for stopping by. This has been Dapper Drabby. I'll bid you guys a Lola. I expect some new content soon, but it is going to be a little slow to kick it back up. Uh, I'm still working a lot of hours, so it's going to... Uh, but I should slowly be able to get more and more content out. Um, I might end up doing a deck tech on this same deck online to show you guys how it kind of played out um but we'll go from there thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in another video bye bye